In this walkthrough, I'm going to be looking at the electronics and electrical systems that drive the motion platform. The platform has three modules. Each module has two power supplies. Each power supply is 24 volts at 30 amps. Between the two power supplies, there is a 12 gauge wire strap and the incoming 240 volts AC is jumpered from one power supply to the other. The output from the power supplies is another 12 gauge wire uh, going to the anode of the diode. The diodes are rated at 100 amps, way over specified for this application, but these were reasonably cheap. They're joined at this point on the breaker, 60 amp breaker. Underneath are two 12 volt 33 amp batteries connected in series. These are 8 gauge wires. The positive comes up and joins on the output of the breaker. The negative comes up and goes through this switch. This is a battery isolating switch. The negative of the power supply comes and joins that negative and together they go to the Sabertooth 2x60. The Sabertooth 2x60 is a the Rolls Royce of motor drivers, uh, can supply up to 60 amps per motor, can drive two motors, 60 amps continuous and over 100 amps. Per. In this application it's being driven by a serial link going to the Arduino which I'll show you in a moment. The output from the power supplies is set at 26 volts. The output from the batteries is 25.3. Taking into account the 0.6 of a volt dropped across the diodes, it means that the power supplies are a few hundred millivolts higher than the battery and should keep them at the stated 25.34. The Sabertooth 2x60 inputs, these eight gauge wires coming from the power supply with the batteries in parallel. The motor two and motor one. Motor two positive goes to uh, this motor and motor one positive goes directly to this motor. The negative of the Sabertooth goes through uh, a relay. This is a horn relay with the contacts are rated at 100 amps. Each motor has one of these relays. The relay output goes to this bolt and the negative of the motor comes and joins it. So what in effect you have is the relay forming a switch between the sabre tooth and the motor. These relays are controlled by another circuit which I'll show you in just a moment. Driving the Sabertooth is this Arduino clone, an Arduino Uno. The USB from the gaming PC comes in through this USB cable. The output of the Uno is on pin 13, driving the input to the Sabertooth. The only thing to really note about this is that the Uno will try and cause the Sabertooth to auto board when it first powers up. So it's important that you power the Sabertooth first and then power on the UNO. UNO will then send the auto board command and then these two devices will talk to each other. On the analog inputs of the Arduino are the position pots, feedback pots from the actuators. They go into analog zero and analog one. There's a couple of 0.1 microfarad noise suppression capacitors on each of those inputs and they are needed. You must put those on. This is the positional pot for the actuator. It's getting its position through this tooth Gear, and the gear is driven by this belt. This is a belt that would typically be used in a 3D printer. The belt comes over this pulley and goes all the way back to the other end of the pot. You can change the tension on the belt by using or removing these uh, clips and you can also slip them off the post if you want to reposition where the middle point of the actuator ball nut is. The limit switches are joined. There's a wire going between the two limit switches and then there's these two wires that come down from the limit switches. One will loop around and go to 
this limit switch on the other actuator and that will then go up in turn to the its second limit switch and so on all the way around the motion platform. To set the actuator center position, this uh, 10 turn Vichet pot was turned to five turns. So this 10 turn Vichet pot was turned to halfway, which is five turns. And it will turn five turns from one end all the way to the top. So this is a 10 turn pot. However, uh, it's only being used five turns. So it's well within the range. It's a 10K linear uh, pot. I've tried to relieve the tension on the pot uh, with this bolt that comes through this 3D assembly and that joins the pot shaft as well. So they share the load on the toothed gear. The Arduino communicates to the Sabretooth at 500,000 bits per second, 500,000 board, very fast. And the Arduino also receives uh, packets of information from the simulator at around 100 packets a second. When turning the simulator on, these three switches control the three modules. Power supplies are turned on one at a time and that prevents the house circuit breaker from tripping. The power to the relays comes from this 3 amp 12 volt battery eliminator and this is the USB powered hub supply. So the typical turn on sequence is Module 1, Module 2, Module 3, the relay power supply, then press the connect button. This will hold the self-latching relay in, which will in turn turn on all of the motor relays and then join the negative output from the sabre tooth to the motor. Let's see how this works. I'm going to turn on the supply for the relays and I'll push the start switch and you can hear the relays uh, switch on. Some of the relays have an internal lead to show that they are engaged. I'm going to trip this limit switch and you can watch the relays drop out. and they can be re-energized again by pressing the self-latching relay button. The USB connection for the helicopter controls is taped to the side of the chair and drops down with the wires from the panic switch through this spiral uh, plastic guide and keeps the wires together. There's a panic switch uh, in easy reach. Typically though I use the trigger control on the helicopter cyclic if something if I'm about to crash or something goes wrong this pauses the simulator I can then reset it without having to uh, get out of the chair and push the reset button for the self-latching relay. All the USB cables from the Arduinos come to this USB hub which is powered a Belkin 7 port hub and the output of that goes directly to the PC. Underneath the chair, there's the butt kicker low frequency transducer. I haven't wired that in yet. And the BKA 1000N butt kicker amplifier with the low and high cutoff filters.